So, a bit of a disclaimer, we're going to get into a lot of uncomfortable and controversial topics during this part. Considering what I want to talk about in this segment, I kinda have to. This has definitely been something people have wanted me to talk about for years anyway, so I figure it's time to address those skeletons in the closet that just about everyone and their mother has dug out to hold over my head. And more. It was honestly very uncomfortable for me to look back at some of the stuff that I did back then, and to come on here to talk about it, I feel like I'm effectively poking a hornet's nest considering how many people have looked to this platform and seen this stuff without the context behind it. So throughout this part, I plan to give more context, give a bit of backstory and reasons as to why I did some of the stuff that I'll be talking about on here. And while none of what I'm going to be talking about excuses the problems that I had during this time frame, I want to make that abundantly clear this was not only a big part of my history, but I feel like talking about it will finally give me a platform to denounce those problems as they are, and finally move on from this accursed past that people hold over my head so often. Not only that, but having that context gathered in a video dedicated to it is just something that I think everyone needs by this point. In layman's terms, this is way more uncomfortable for me to talk about than it is for you to hear. However, if it's still super uncomfortable for you, I will not blame you for shutting off the video or skipping this part. Proceed at your own discretion. DeviantArt is a site that I got into in 2011 as a dumping ground for the various sketches I doodle in class. Initially, I wanted to post the comics I'd made, and to make new ones specifically to show off to the site. It wasn't initially made to be a place that I'd grow to use daily, nor was it something that I really saw lasting for years on end. I might have been someone who draws, but I wouldn't consider myself an artist by any means. I mean. Have you seen what I draw? Like, I don't have any understanding of anatomy. I cut corners constantly when I draw, and it looks like something a four-year-old could do so much better. To me, it's a mere hobby. Nothing more, nothing less. So don't expect me to go too in detail about the problems with the actual drawings I posted, because I'm going to have no idea how I'd go about actually critiquing that. But that in mind, as I browsed the site more, the more I came to appreciate it as a website, so I picked up digitally drawing. With a mouse on Microsoft Paint. Did I mention I was 14 in 2011? Because let me tell you, that will come into play later. Things that I made in 2011 were harmless. There's nothing particularly worth talking about. It's literally only a year later before we get into anything that could be looked at with any sense of discussion points. This was when I came out as transgender, started showing confidence issues, started up a dare series that literally had two takers, and it is interesting to note that I turned down the initial dare by Hummingwind because I simply couldn't do this one, but then turned around a year later and did a dare that was weirder and caused more controversy because I could. We'll come back to this in a bit. I started up a comic called Suzanne and Friends, a TG comic about my Sona at the time turning into a girl named Suzanne. This also marked the creation of the Maxia Academy setting, something that I've kept around for years. To those who don't know what TG means, at base level it just means transgender and is usually tagged in images on DeviantArt when a character changes their physical sex. Basically it's one of those man becomes woman stories that you see in cartoons. It's a very common trope that grew a community around it that I had started following around this point maybe a bit beforehand considering I knew what Rule 63 was at the time. Started up a comic called Dots, a simplistic comedy comic about solid colored circles, showed off that my room was an absolute pigsty, which no one needed to see, started an online homeschool, another point of discussion that'll be important later, started up a card game, I'll be talking about that in the next part, and made a giant fuck all grilled cheese sandwich that I wound up spending an entire day eating. Still makes me sick to think about, that was a terrible mistake. So to briefly talk about Susan and Friends and Dots for a second, uh, so remember how Doodles 2 was a storytelling mess that utilized Nazi imagery for a singular art? Also remember how I had a story that utilized the term sex change in a story written by an 8 year old? So uh, both of these show the same basic talking points that I had back then. So Dots is a stupid comic similar to Doodles in both simplicity and what the premise is. It's just a comedy comic used to make some form of fun of whatever was going on at the time, such as Black getting a blue screen on his computer, which I apparently was having problems with at the time. That said, surprise to no one who's seen anything else I released on this channel, I was very unlikably edgy, in the sense that I wasn't even good at being edgy. As an example, there's a whole comic in Dots designated to just calling the word swag, retarded, and looking at the reasons why, it's such a pedantic argument that doesn't hold to scrutiny when you actually think about it from a critical standpoint. One argument you can make against it is that language changes often and words swap around in meaning all the time. Ironically, the word retarded is another instance of that. In a dated way, you have an offensive slur used for those who had developmental issues in life, but the more modern usage of the word being a way to call something foolish or stupid. 
Both are used informally and can and do be considered offensive. But that in mind, obviously Little Scribble here was using this word in the modern use to argue the definition of a word with its dated definition. Good job, this argument sucks and you're stupid for making it. Worse yet is when you consider the likes of the word swagger, a word that has been around since the 16th century and means literally the same thing swag meant, at least in one definition, being the one that people were using in 2012. God, this shit is infuriating, so let's go to something uncomfortable instead. Susan and Friends. So I want to put back into mind that I was 15 in 2012, which means that my Sona was 15 in 2012. So looking back, there are moments in this comic that are incredibly uncomfortable to go back and reread. See, I made a character named Sid. I still have him, I haven't changed much from him because he's a decent source of comic relief for some people, but Sid, by nature, is a bit of a pervert. Again, it's supposed to be played for laughs, and to an extent I understand that's what I went for within the comic. But if I hadn't made it clear, Little Scribble wasn't funny, and even if I was back then, it doesn't change some of this dialogue. Especially page 9, the one that kind of abruptly finishes the comic, because we're supposed to believe that a woman poking a 10 year old girl's chest for a breast size is an appropriate decoy for a 15 year old girl trying to find her bra size. I get what I was going for, it's a guy turning into a girl and would have been hella awkward about going in and shopping for better fitting clothes. It wasn't supposed to come off as creepy, but it did. I definitely botched that one up. Good job, little scribble. Neither of these comics ever finished, and thank god for that. Both were trash, as you can well see. I also want to point out how my Sona and his gender-bent self had a few images where they are implied dating, or at least loving each other. I had no self-awareness. And before we move to 2013 images, I want to point out this one, because this vent art will come back later. Now, moving into 2013, let's talk about fetishism a bit. It's not often talked about considering a lot of people think of it as a taboo, something that should be hidden away. This stems from the fact that the common thought process of fetishes and kinks is that one, they're one of the same, which I can assure you they're not, and two, they're just weird sex things, which in one manner of speaking it is, but I have found over the years that people partake in fetishes non-sexually and have used it as kind of a fantasy to escape from possible stress. That's kind of where I fell under after some time after figuring out what the crap fetishes even were, and I still meet people from time to time who do this even nowadays. People don't want to talk about that though because it's easier to not do so, and this causes the general public to see people partaking in it look like horrible degenerates that need to be locked up. I'm not the only one who has found this either. Back in like, January of 2016, there was a Cosmopolitan article talking about something along these lines. I grant you, it's just merely one, but with how little research goes into this discussion, pardon me for having limited sources. I want to bring this up though because I do identify as asexual. The act of having sex itself does not appeal to me. It hasn't ever and it probably never will. However, I have partaken in things that are seen as sexual by representing certain fetishes on my account over the years. This has been a talking point about me for years. I'm not going to pretend like this is new ground nobody knows about yet. Fetishism does kind of intrigue me, both as a study topic and as a way to relieve stress. Needing an escape is important. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with me there. And during the homeschool era, as I'm going to call it, I desperately needed stress relief. Of course, we're not at that point yet. 2013 was pretty bad too, but the worst is yet to come. 2013, though, was when I found out what fetishes as a whole were and what some of the different fetishes are. Transformation in particular was the big one I found, and so I learned the subsets of age regression, TG, anthropomorphism, BE, which stands for breast butt expansion, for those who have never heard of that one, and inanimate, along a few others. But these five in particular were the premise of a comic I decided to make in 2013 exploring the different transformation subsets called Transformation World, another comic that I never finished. Transformation World was a comic about five people on a ship who found themselves transforming unwillingly, each one falling under the different subsets I had learned about and had to start adjusting to their new life. Again, it was never finished, and this is one comic in particular people point to when they want to talk about some of the more strange things I've done. And it is strange. It shares a similar discomforting subtext that Susan and Friends has, probably more so given the topic being something seen as inherently more sexual in nature. Page 3 certainly doesn't help matters, so in hindsight, no, I don't like this comic either. It's good it was cancelled when it was, before I made an even bigger fool of myself, at least in this department. Another thing people like to point to that I did was the second dare picture. You've most undoubtedly seen this picture before. It shows my, at the time, Sona wearing an over-exaggerated diaper that's clearly supposed to be wet and smiling while stuck inside it. I did draw this, there's no getting around that. 
But I feel like there's a bit of a misnomer when people talk about this picture though, because people only acknowledge the fact that my Sona is wearing a wet diaper and smiling, but they conveniently ignore the blatant context on screen that dared me to draw the character enjoying it. That said, let me point to something that no one else has that would have struck me as weird from an outsider standpoint and then explain what basically had happened. Little Scribble previously denied the first dare that was asking for a Yuri scene. A simple Yuri scene of all things would have been realistically easy for her to draw that. However, she did turn around and willingly draw this, which had anyone bothered to look at the context of the two picture dare series, they would have had a lot more ground to stand on to expose me as some sexual deviant or something, whatever people try to expose me for nowadays. I've lost count. But that said, even with this context in mind, there's still the year-long gap between Dare 1 and Dare 2, so even then it'd be safe to assume that Little Scribble within that year was more open to the idea of drawing more explicit things. And that is basically it. People can change over the course of a mere year, and whether this is for the better or worse for Little Scribble, that's up to subjectivity. I personally probably wouldn't draw something like this nowadays, because I'd gotten a better understanding of what would be appropriate to draw, but during 2013 I was like, what, 16? Guess what I didn't have that much of an understanding of back then? I also made a comic promoting a card game that I made around this time, as well as some Total Drama Doodle parody, which no one gives a fuck about, they never did finish either, with the latter of the two literally being three pages long. 2014, 17 years old, this was the time frame of failed projects. I started up a pseudo sprite comic that was supposed to be about people getting in touch over an MMO, it went nowhere. Started up a transformation poker game where people chose five cards in a suit that dictated what kind of transformation they were going to get. People played it for a bit until it lost steam. I wanted to make a transformation card game and shortly after a DeviantArt game. Both went nowhere. I had started streaming on Livestream.com again. I tried making a choose your own adventure that went nowhere either. I did a pick my poison series of transformation pieces. I did meme reviews before PewDiePie made them popular. They weren't good. I did a total drama fan elimination round. I wanted to make a transformation roguelike. That went nowhere. I had an ambition for this kind of stuff that quickly diminished every time I picked up shit like this, so there's bound to be a lot of projects that you could probably find that I started that went absolutely nowhere because my heart wasn't enough into it. Part of that could be attributed to laziness, others could be attributed to my ever-raising stress levels, but regardless of what it was, 2014 was definitely a year where things that I wanted to happen didn't. I also joined a group called Dimension Wars around this time too, and they were some relief of the year. Grant you only to an extent, I still felt stressed overall given the homeschool that I did, getting ever the more complicated and strict. See, to give a bit of context, I was doing online homeschool from 2012 to 2015, and it was just downright the worst due to the classes on the site being laid out differently class to class, scheduling problems that caused class gatherings to overlap, and so I'd be marked as absent. My internet connection didn't help matters either, as having a stable connection to do and or turn in the classwork wasn't always there. And well, yeah, I won't lie and say there wasn't some aspects that distracted me, I was connected to the internet. Not helped by the fact that I had no outside connections and felt isolated for three years of my life. And boy am I glad I'm not in academics currently because I would not want to go back. Things haven't exactly been better, but I'll take what I got now over what I went through in that time frame. Anyway, the point is that I needed a mental break, shown by the plethora of vent art that I made at the time. And this is where we get into roleplaying, specifically transformation and fetish roleplays. I won't go too in detail about each RP I did because I don't feel as if there's a lot to talk about to be honest, which given how people often talked about it, you'd figure there would be, but there's really not. Most didn't really go anywhere to do anything interesting digging through them. However, there was one that I would be amiss to talk about, the Game Girl RP. Technically, this is out of order since it was 2015, but since we're talking about them now, and this one did spark up a little bit of controversy in 2018 that got some very not-so-nice allegations lobbed at me, I feel like I should talk about it now. Mainly because of the not-thought-out descriptor of the character not being physically older than 8 years old, and then having one of the people I was role-playing with have a character that was supposed to be moldable grow breast only to grope them. It's a little creepy, sure, I don't really have an excuse for how creepy it sounds, and I'm not going to defend it on the basis of it being creepy or otherwise uncomfortable. I was a stupid 18 year old by this point who didn't know how to tell people that I was uncomfortable. Though the purpose of the RP wasn't to be sexual, that's just where the role player took it and I allowed it. 
And obviously, five years after this roleplay, and I haven't done anything similar since, even when I was still doing the fetishy roleplays in 2016, age 19, I think it's safe to say that I've learned from this. It was just one of those of-the-time things that I grew from. In any case, yeah, it's creepy. But I learned from where my boundaries were doing these, and they were a good source of escapism during a time where I really needed it. So I don't particularly feel as if I regret having done the RPs, no matter how many people believe that I probably should. It's just one of those things that I can look back at and cringe knowing that I grew from as a whole. I would imagine that's not good enough for some people, uh, and that's perfectly fine. As I said, this is kind of very uncomfortable for me to talk about nowadays, looking back at it. Um, but here I am, because I would be amiss to talk about it. Uh, anyway, now that we're done with that sidetrack, what else did I do in 2014? Oh yeah, these. I eventually plan to redesign some of these characters. Particularly Ginny and Brittany, like, they need it the most. There's probably more that I'm missing from my 2014 gallery, but that's all I really had as far as stuff that I can talk about goes. With this in mind, during 2015, my grandmother started picking up using a computer and wound up learning about how to specifically browse DeviantArt and was told the name of mine and my little brother's accounts. And as you can probably guess, by now, when she found my account, there was a lot of concerning red flags due to the stress levels I was having at the time, and from specifically my vent art from 2013, 2014, and even some in 2015, caused my grandmother to worry about me maybe having some sort of mental disorder. Now, I've never been officially diagnosed with more than partial red-green colorblindness, which has a different name when you get diagnosed with it, but I'd be fucked to remember what it's called. So, that wasn't exactly what bothered me about my grandmother finding my DeviantArt account. It was what followed in a conversation between the two of us that had me all visibly bugged by it. I won't go too much into the details because that's literally private information that should not be fully out there, but to give kind of a vague idea, only part of it is what you're probably thinking. She also found out that I was trans at this point, and now I have my grandfather's copy of the Bible in my room. I hope that's not too much information, but that's a general idea. But when this happened, I then had to separate myself from the Doodle Tones account that I had on DeviantArt, or at least I mostly did so, considering I joined a group in early 2015 called Melfar Academy on that account. I did still wind up posting there for about a year after until I finally left it as a whole in 2016. And other than posting about my messy room, again in the form of some stacked bottles and creating a lot of characters with some being more sketchy than others, and have since been changed to get rid of the uncomfortable aspects anyway, there's not really a lot to talk about as far as that account gallery goes. I thought there was, but like, maybe I'm misremembering writing a story that involves rape because I couldn't find it anywhere on there. And I was gonna talk about how bad that story was, but I don't know, maybe I never did that. If it turns out that I actually did do that and anyone ever does stumble upon it, I'm super sorry. I was in a very dark place at the time and I didn't exactly think upon the repercussions of it. Rape is a very touchy subject that needs to have a certain finesse to write about and trust me when I say, with what I'm remembering, no. I didn't, but perhaps I actually deleted that one because again, I couldn't find it looking through everything, so that might be something luckily lost to the sands of time. It's easily one of, if not the worst thing I've ever written though. Which is quite the feat really, given everything else we've seen, and it's not even the end of it considering all the vent journals I made talking about either killing myself or how I should probably die, which, I mean, I guess some things never change, do they? Shock of all shockers, I'm still a very moody individual who breaks under stress. Who knew? Sarcasm aside, I think that's about everything I can look back on and cover, at least for the first account. I guess it's time to talk about the move to the account that I use currently and the problems that arise there, because if you thought distancing myself from my first account would instinctively mean that I would change my ways on a dime, you obviously have never met me. I'm a stubborn fuck. Though I will admit we are coming to a close on the bigger things. So I did continue doing erotic roleplays for about a year after switching over. They stopped about late 2016 when I realized I didn't need them anymore, but as I said, I don't have much to talk about there. They're all about what you would expect from RPs like that at least from what I saw looking back four to five years later. And in all honesty, for a while my DeviantArt went back to a dumping ground of dumb ideas and roleplays, promotional stuff for a series that I talk about in a future part, I joined the TG Society and I wound up creating a lot of characters. One character in particular of note being Joey Straw, a character used to poke at the 2015 understanding of what was known as a social justice warrior. She's also amongst a lengthy list of characters that I want to eventually get around and redesign at some point. This character was a very much at the time kind of mentality, and a lot of it is horribly spiteful and outdated, and I kind of hate it, like, a lot. 
I don't know if I mentioned this yet or not, but throughout 2014 and 2015, I got obnoxiously into politics. We all make mistakes, don't we? Kind of the theme of this video series. But with this political side of 18-year-old Doodle, you can kind of see a more spiteful side of how I used to be because of my political takes were exclusively built on counterculture rhetoric and was super regressive in its ideals. Like, you can say what you will about where I stand now, I don't talk about my beliefs often because I know some are in the rather controversial side of the discussion, but at least now I have a solidified understanding of my beliefs and where they stem from now than back then. I mean, really, back then I just went with whatever the skeptic community told me and that will maybe come back into play later? I'm not sure. Like, take for instance this hot take about a fence where I kind of went full on Ben Shapiro talking about how facts don't care about people's feelings. Which is a really bad belief when you want to consider how critique works. Like, technically yes, by all means facts don't care about feelings. This statement is technically true, as what is factual disassociates from all instances of emotional range. However, if you don't consider one's own emotions and how to properly present your statements, you're going to come across as unpleasantly discourteous and normally people won't want to listen to your position and will be more obliged to disagree with your statement if you don't come across as civil or reasonable. Of course, this was something that I certainly didn't know in 2015, as this whole rant is unabashedly blunt with 18-year-old Scribble's position at the time about offense. That said, not everything in this rant is absolute, wretchedly incorrect and ironically offensive dreck. This section here about being outspoken can help your social and reasoning skills is definitely an interesting take that I forgot I used to hold. Because on the one hand, there's still that aspect of having tact when you discuss or debate with something, but on the other, I can see where I was coming from. Because, yeah, you can become better in problem-solving areas if you're more open to speak out, because it gives you more of a chance to learn where you're wrong and allows for discussion of new ideas about a singular topic, because people will know what position you hold and can come to their own conclusion about it, whether they agree or disagree. I actually kind of like that ideology in hindsight, and if there's anything I can give little 2018 Scribble is that she wasn't always stupid. Just mostly stupid. But we'll come back to that. I also found out that I posted a private chat out into the public without either party's permission, which, yikes. I also posted this picture in 2015, which you might be a smidgen confused about, but don't worry, we'll come back to that shithole in a minute. 2016 has the next piece that I want to talk about. By this point, I was 19 and was a lot more similar to what you see in some of my earlier commentaries on my channel. So kind of a prick who only partially understood what the crap they were doing. With that in mind, I started up a series of DeviantArt rants in written form, well, I say series, but there were only two that were made. One was about favoring for attention, whatever that means. The other was about fetishism, and while I admit I kinda, to an extent, still stand by the overall ideal of why do you care at the end of the day what someone's into, I will say with this rant combined with the aforementioned dare pictures and ERPs following them, even though it's a bit early to say this, as this will be in a different part. Doodle, why were you at all surprised people thought you had a diaper fetish? I also had a rant he posted about leaving Melfar Academy, one of the groups that I joined. It's an unpleasant read, I came off as a fucking prick, I pin a lot of the blame on other people when there is a significant level of fault on me to reach out for a group like this instead of expecting people to reach out to me. Melfar was a roleplay group that didn't do erotic roleplays, so there's even less of a conversation there as to the content. However, it was something that I should have actually partook in, instead of expecting me to be roped into everything. And regardless of how I apparently actually tried to do that, I probably could have been a lot more assertive and partook in more events the group held. So basically, this is just me pinning blame on someone else, which I used to do a lot throughout 2016 and 2017, but that might be a discussion for another day. But that's really the last thing that I have to talk about about the current account. As the years progressed, I stopped posting problematic content within my gallery itself. At least, I hope so. Perhaps we could revisit it in a few years' time and maybe see whether or not that's the case. But as of currently, I can't say anything on there after that point is anything morally questionable or reprehensible. And say what you will about the quality of the art itself. Trust me, I'm sure you could run circles around my understanding of art and demolish me in a way that exposes my scribbles as the amateur crap that it is, and I'd probably agree with just about all of the criticism at this point, regardless of how much I actually change or apply it at the end of the day. As I said, time and time again, I'm not an artist, I'm just someone who likes to draw every now and then. That said, while that's my gallery covered, problematic behavior can definitely be found within journal posts throughout this account as well. Some are as petty and insignificant like me getting mad at paper because I can't commission some artist I guess I liked at the time. Looking back, it seems almost entitled, but at the end of the day, nothing too egregious. Not like, say, the stupid hot take I had regarding gender bending art and how official gender bends apparently stunt growth and creativity or some shit. Which, 
while I understand where I was coming from back then and I still understand the mindset, it's just wrong looking back at it five years later. Apparently the big thing with me and gender bending was the question of, of how would this character look? And I saw gender bends as just the official answer, so they disappointed me back then. But if I made this claim as a third party nowadays, I'd probably cover it as some form of material, mainly for the same reasons that people argued me back then, being that the official looks could still be expanded upon or changed to better fit the imagination of the individual making the art piece. So take that as you will. Going further into the account though, you can find about where I started commentaries, and trust me, I have a full intention of going in detail enough with those in a future part, but for now, we're leaving this as it is. Those are my big accounts, my main hubs, and would I do things differently if I could? Oh, for sure I would. There's not a doubt in my mind that one of the things that I'd possibly do differently is when getting involved into a fetish-related activity to put it on a separate account in case of something like my family finding the account. Because as it was, I was putting that stuff out there on a main, which is a very dangerous thing to do in a lot of different cases. And so putting that offshore, hidden away, could have still been both beneficial to my mental state, but also prevented the issues of my family finding it. That said, I could have also done less roleplaying, or at the very least chosen a different path of roleplaying, because as much as I'd argue this was the most helpful thing that kept me sane during some of the worst years of my life, this was still something that obviously overran my account for a while, and while looking through the pages again after so many years of not browsing through them, I could make the very reasonable argument that this was an addiction that probably was not as healthy of an escape as I thought it was at the time. I will state fully that I do not regret getting into looking at the fetishes I got around to looking at, as this helped me understand and sympathize with people to a certain degree. You're free to try and skewer me for that all you want, but we all grow at different rates and utilizing different methods of learning. I was a teenager who was still trying to figure herself out. I was, during the beginning of my DeviantArt, still a little hesitant to go by she, her pronouns all that much, even after coming out publicly. I would when I thought it would save, but I would jump between the two frequently, and you can tell given the parallels between my DeviantArt history and the music that I was making that I talked about in the last part. I just happened to grow using these strange desires. It may be weird, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Though with that in mind, again, the fetish for fetishism was too much. Heck, it even followed into a third DeviantArt account that I don't talk about often, where I made fan-made Yu-Gi-Oh cards in 2015. That's a whole different can of worms in of itself, because and I know there's definitely going to be objections to it, I used other people's artwork for my own cards to just throw around on that account with no credit. One of the groups of cards I made was called Athletic Damsel, which was just a bunch of characters in bondage drawn by Piroro, but you would never know that just looking into the cards themselves and just... God, they're not even that good either. Honestly, a lot of cards within this account are other trash from every standpoint, including from the perspective of a longtime Yu-Gi-Oh player and someone who made their own card game and tried to learn off the mistakes there, but obviously didn't. There's a significant lack of what is known as problem-solving card text, which Yu-Gi-Oh is heavily contingent on when building archetypes and building upon the rules. And my cards just ignore entirely, which puts a bunch of the cards in the problematic category. I will say there are definitely concepts to decks here that I really enjoy looking back. Like, I love the Scarlet Fiend Dark type idea of slowly burning your opponent's deck at the cost of having your own burn away to activate the effects of cards. It's a give and take that I think feels fair, and I definitely enjoy that. Hidden photo cards were basically less annoying versions of the real danger archetype Yu-Gi-Oh implemented, theming of cryptids and all. Moeko Squad is hands down my favorite archetype I created because of its balance and synergy of forcing monsters to work off of each other in order to do literally anything, so obviously they're not all that bad. It's just when you consider the few diamonds in the rough against everything else on there that's either super overpowered or alternatively super underpowered, plus how lazy everything seemed to come off as visually. It's really hard to look back at something like this and presumed that I put the time and effort into it that other fan-made Yu-Gi-Oh card makers put into their work. Basically, that med I was not. But perhaps that is a story for another day. I don't want to bore you all with the nitty-gritty details of over 1,000 plus deviations of mere fan-made Yu-Gi-Oh cards and the problems and imbalance that came with those when I know not all of you particularly care for Yu-Gi-Oh to begin with. Instead, I'll bore you with the details of how Little Scribble tried to make her own card game, how she failed at balance within that department, and how much looking at these cards that came out after show a sign of regression over actual progression in the next part.